So welcome again to this particular session and we will begin with section 2 now especially after having finished section 1. So section 2 as you can see deals with interdepartmental transfer. What we mean by interdepartmental transfer? Suppose there are two departments, let us say there is department A and there is department B. Correct? Let us presume for a while that department A produces goods and department B provides some services. So sometime a particular department may sell goods to other department. For example, A might sell goods to department B and similarly department B might sell some services to department A. No problem will arise if out of transferred, no proportion of the goods are still in the stock. For example, if A has transferred goods to B, Department B, and at the end of the year, no portion of these goods, these interdepartmentally transferred goods, is not there, then no problem will arise. Irrespective of the fact whether these goods have been transferred at cost or whether these goods have been transferred at a profit, no problem will ever arise if out of the transferred goods, nothing is left with the other department because A has transferred goods to department B and if by the end of the year no goods are remaining, then no problem will arise. Is it clear to you? That will be covered in section 3, such sort of problem. Correct? So here, simple interdepartmental transfer means we are, the departments are transferring goods to the other department, whether at cost or at selling price or at a profit margin, irrespective of that. And we shall presume that nothing is left at the end of the year. Correct? So, interdepartmental transfer goods from the following trial balance prepare departmental trading and profit and loss account. Correct? For the year ended 31st March 2022 and a balance sheet also they have asked this time. No problem. Now, it is given to us in the question, there is opening stock. Now, opening stock with department A is equal to 1700 with department B is 1450. So, I will simply put towards the debit side. No problem at all. Similarly, purchases of department A and B is given to you. Again, no problem. Similarly, sales are given to you in this particular question. Again, no problems. Respective department sales are given to you. So, that should not be a problem for you. Similarly, wages is also no problem. So far, the items which have been given to us have been given in a segregated manner. So, no problem we have faced. However, regarding rent rates and taxes, correct? It is given in total and figures are in thousands. Remember one thing, figures are in thousands. So, 9,39,000 or simply 939, you may say so. So, we will have to divide this expense. Similarly, we will have to divide sundry expenses, salaries, lighting and heating, discount allowed, discount received, advertising, carriage inward, furniture and fittings. Sorry, furniture and fittings is an item of balance sheets. So, it will not be written in the departmental trading and profit or loss account. Obviously, this item, this item will figure in balance sheet. Machinery will figure in balance sheet. Daters and creditor will also find place in the balance sheet capital and also drawings you have been given all these items will find place in the balance sheet and also cash at bank further in the question now below you have been given this is an important line inter internal transfer of goods from a to b is 42000 now remember one thing above the figures are in thousands so you will simply write 42 correct 42 would mean actually 42,000. So, A has transferred 42,000 worth of goods to department B. So, this is a case of interdepartmental transfer. When A will transfer to department B, obviously it will be written towards the credit side in the column of A. But simultaneously, this item will also appear towards the debit side in the column of B. That means the department which will receive the goods, he will debit the same. And similarly, the department which is transferring the goods shall write what we call that particular item towards the credit side. That's all. Then further, you have been given in this particular question that items, rent and rates, taxes and insurance, sundry expenses, lighting and heating, salaries and salaries 
and carriage are to be apportioned in the ratio of two third and one third. That means all these expenses, that is rent and taxes, rent, taxes and insurance will be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1, sundry expenses in the 2 is to 1, even salaries will be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1, even lighting and heating will be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1 and carriage, carriage inward will also be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1 as per the information which is given to us, correct? Advertising expenses to be apportioned equally. Advertisement expenses to be apportioned equally question has said further. Now, advertisement expenses are given to us uh, here. So, I will divide these expenses in the ratio of 1 is to 1. Now, question says that discount allowed and received are to be apportioned. Discount allowed and received are to be apportioned on the basis of departmental sales and purchases. We know that as far as discount allowed is concerned that is related to sales because when we do credit sales, correct, we allow sometime discount to the debtors to prompt to lure them to pay the amount uh, uh, before the stipulated date. So discount allowed is moreover related with sales and of course Discount received is always related with purchases. So, discount allowed will be divided on the basis of the sales ratio, needless to add here, correct, on the basis of sales ratio and as far as discount received is concerned, that will be divided on the basis of purchases. I have already told you, whenever you will divide the item on the basis of sales or purchases, it is always better to take only what we call net sales, correct. Now, further you have been given in this question the depreciation at 10% per annum on furniture and fittings. So, depreciation, depreciation on furniture at 10% per annum on furniture and fittings and on machinery is to be charged 3 4 to department A and 1 4 to department B. So, this time some information is related with depreciation also. So, we will compute the 10% depreciation on furniture and fittings then also on machinery. Then total depreciation will be divided between what we call department A and B in the ratio of 3 is to 1. That means on these two items, on these two items, furniture and fittings, I will have to compute the 10% depreciation. Whatever depreciation will be there, that depreciation will be divided between A and B in the ratio of 3 fourth and 1 fourth. Also in this question here it is written, six line is also very important that services rendered by department B to department A are worth rupees 50,000. So department A might be producing goods and services and department B might be what we call providing some services. So in the current year department B gave some services worth rupees 50,000 to department A. So again it is a case of interdepartmental sales. So on the credit side of B I will write 50,000 and on the debit side of A I will write 50,000. That's all. Then further we have been given here closing stock. Now closing stock remember one thing is given 16,74,000 and 12,5,000. So this is how you will have to solve this question. Question have been given in a solved manner, no doubt about that, but still I will do it for you. Correct? Now in this question, first of all, what will you do? See here. Now let me see if I can create a space without reducing the view. Let us see, check. What happened? Right. So if it is possible, I will do here. Correct? And I will stretch a line. First of all, section 2 is there. This is section 2. Now start it already. Section 2. And as far as section 2 is concerned, we are picking up question number 2.1. That means first question of section 1. 
obviously again here i have to and this section deals with interdepartmental transfers departmental trading in profit and loss account i will have to prepare departmental trading and profit and loss account Correct. In order to prepare departmental trading and profit and loss account, first of all, let me actually prepare the, let me stress the line. In fact, it's a pretty long question. Okay, I think this much is enough. Sufficient space now. And there are two departments, fortunately, in this case. A department A, department B. And figures are in thousands. It is always better to mention in the examination. Correct? So, one by one, we will write here. Although question has been given in a solved manner. Almost every question has been given in a solved manner. But still, I will do it for you. Because you need to practice by writing. That is also very important. 1,700 is your opening stock given to you. Correct? You can do it by yourself also. Start doing by yourself. Where you will confront any problem, then only look over here. Then we have been given purchases. I will write here purchases. Amount of purchases is 3540. 3540. Correct. And as far as 3540 and 3020. 3020. There was an item wages. There is an item, sorry, wages also. 820 and 270. Then we will write here sales. As far as sales is concerned, that is equal to 6080 and 5125. 5125. Correct? These are the things which is given to us. Now, it is very important for you to understand one important aspect. First of all, in the adjustment, it is written. That department A has transferred 42,000, 42,000 worth of goods. So I will write here interdepartmental. Inter, actually, you can simply write transfer, but just because this is first question, I will write interdepartmental transfers, T oblique F. Department A is the transferrer department, correct? So it has transferred 42,000 worth of goods because I have written the figures in thousands. So right here, 42. And this figure will appear towards the debit side, right here, transfers. And this figure now will appear towards the debit side because A has transferred. So A is the seller and B is receiver or purchaser. So B will debit it. Similarly, the last line of the question, last line of the question states that B has transferred 50,000 worth of services. So you write here 50,000 because this time B is transferring. So B will write it towards the credit side. And because this time A is receiver, A will put it towards the debit side. Is it clear to you or not? Now there is an item below carriage. Carriage inward. So I will write carriage inwards over here. And as per the information, it is given that carriage inwards will have to be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1. So in the ratio of 2 is to 1, I will divide the carriage inward. Correct? 156 and 78. So now I am in a position to compute. And below, in the last line, question has given closing stops. So don't forget to write closing stock. Again, when you will write the closing stock, write in this manner, 1674. Don't write triple zero here because figures are in thousands. And similarly, 1205. 12,5,000. So I will write 1205. 
So I have been able to now compute the what we call gross profit. So your gross profit carried down will be equal to this much. 1530 and 1520. 1520. After having completed your gross profit, obviously, now you will move over to the next part of the question. That is profit and loss account. Gross profit brought down. Gross profit brought down is equal to 1530. And 1520, correct? 1520. Is it clear to you? Now, lots of expenses have been given in here in this particular question. So we start with rent, rates, and taxes. I will use the short form rent, rates, taxes, and insurance. And below, as per the information, this item need to be divided in the ratio of two is to one. So write 626 and 330. Similarly, next item is sundry expenses. Again, as per information number 2, this expense will have to be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1. So, 360 that is equal to 240 and 120. Similarly, we have been given lighting and heat, heating, L oblique H. Again, this ratio will be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1, that is equal to 140, 210, so 2 by 3, 140 and 70. Then next we have been given salaries and question, and as per the information below, even salaries will have to be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1, so 200 and 100. Now, <coughs> we have been given discount allowed. And here, discount allowed. Discount allowed, I will write here working note. So I will do the working and then I will write here. After that, actually advertising. In fact, after discount allowed, there is discount received. Discount received. Discount received we will divide on the basis of purchases ratio. Just wait. Working note I have simply written. And then advertising expenses. Below it is written very clearly that advertising expenses need to be divided in equally. 368, so 184, 184. Then we have been given depreciation. Expenses, depreciation expenses need to be divided in the ratio of 3 is to 1. But I will compute it, the total amount of depreciation. This is what is given to us in the question, correct? Now, first of all, let me have a look over what we call, in this particular question, sales ratio and purchases ratio. First, let me divide the discount. Discount allowed. In order to divide discount allowed, what I will do, there are two department, department A, department B. I will write the respective sales and respective sales are 6080 and 5125. It is very clearly given in the question, correct? Now I will total these sales. The total of the sales will be equal to how much? That is 5, 0, 2, 11. So 11, 2, 0, 5. Correct? Now, discount allowed amount, how much is given? Discount allowed amount which is given to you in this particular question is 222, correct? So 222 into 6080 divided by 11,205. So approximately 120 and 222 into 5125 
divided by 11,205, that is 100 into. So that is how you are going to actually segregate the discount allowed expenses. So you will write here discount allowed 120 and 102. Now we pick up discount received. Amount of discount received is 65. Discount received. As far as discount received is concerned, similarly you write Department A, Department B, write the amount of purchases. Amount of purchases given to you in this particular question is 3540 and 3020. 3020. That is 6, 5, Six zero. This is the total. Now we will take the amount. Amount is sixty five. So sixty five will have to be allocated to Department A in this manner three five four zero divided by six five six zero. Approximately that will be equal to thirty five. And sixty five into three zero two zero divided by 6560 approximately that will be equal to 30. So we have divided now discount figure also. Discount figure happens to be 35 and 30. Now only thing remaining is machinery depreciation. So we will compute the depreciation first of all. Depreciation at the rate of 10% on furniture and fittings so we will have to look at furniture and fitting amount and find out what will be the amount of depreciation now if you will look into your what we call question you will find that depreciate furniture figure given to you is 300 so depreciation on furniture will be equal to 300 into 30 into 10 percent sorry that will be equal to 30 and the figure of machinery is 2100 figure of machinery is 2100 into 10 percent that is 210 so total depreciation will be equal to 240 and this 240 will be divided between department A and B in the ratio of 3 fourth and 1 fourth. If I will take 1 fourth of 240, that will be equal to 60. And 180, I think. Correct? So that is how we have computed the amount of depreciation also. So I will write here depreciation 160, sorry 180 and 60, 180 and 60, correct? Now we are in a position to find out the net profit or loss. In this question, actually there is net loss in department A, in fact, and there is net profit in department B according to the solution. I haven't computed, honestly speaking, but you must check always. Now, I will write here net, pro net loss. In department A, there is net loss to the extent of 126. Question has also asked you to prepare the balance sheet also. So, I will prepare the balance sheet. Correct? I will prepare the balance sheet in this case. Now, if I will prepare the balance sheet, it will be like this. Balance sheet. Below there were some items like capital. So, start with capital. Amount given to you in the capital is 4766. Just below capital there is drawings. Obviously you will have to subtract the drawings from the capitals. 
correct amount of drawing happens to be 450 you will subtract it and then whatever net profit is there you add net profit net profit is of department b 602 and we will subtract the net loss net loss is 126 and then i will write the net amount in the outer column 4792 and there are creditors also in this question so creditors is given to you as 1860 1860 as far as balance sheet is concerned i will write furniture and fittings now furniture and fitting given to us is 300 and 30 is the depreciation we just charged so 270 i will write here then machinery is also given amount of machinery is 2100 i will subtract 210 that is depreciation and 1890 i will write in the outer column then in this particular question we have been given daters amount of daters is 606 and don't forget to write closing stock Closing stock of department A was 1674 and of department B is 1205. So total closing stock will be equal to 2879. And cash at bank is also there and it is equal to 1007. So now you will tally your balance sheet. It will be equal to 6652, 6652. So this is how you are going to tally your balance sheet. Is it clear to you? So I hope you are able to get this particular question. Now we pick up the next one. right this question also is of this category but slightly slightly more not exactly difficult but slightly more interesting than the last one correct last one was lengthy but not very difficult so now what i'm going to do here in this particular question first of all we have been given see here i will also explain the question simultaneously i need not require to do this question i think just let's let's have a look over here opening stock is given to you now opening stock actually in this question is fifteen thousand. there are two department actually x and y first of all you need to understand this there are two department x and y second important point which is given to you that opening stock is given to you just you have to be a little bit careful in this regard in this regard your opening stock as far as department x is concerned that is 15200 and of y actually it is 10800 correct you immediately write in your solution opening stock 15200 and 10800 no problem at all then we have been given purchases purchases of department x actually is 75100 figures have just moved uh, away with and purchases of department y is 69800 perhaps the notes which are available with you over their figures will be given in perfect manner don't worry about that so purchases actually department X is 75,100. So I will write here 75,100. 75,000 and 69,000. 75,100 and 69,800. Correct. This is 75,100. 75,100 and 69,800. Then we have been given in this question carriage inward actually carriage inward is 2860 and carriage inward will have to be divided 
in the last question when we did carriage invert it was mentioned in the information that carriage invert need to be divided in the ratio of 2 is to 1 let us see whether any information is given in this question or not now regarding salaries actually department x salary actually is 9000 and department y salary is 8500 actually salaries of respective departments in this particular question has been given correct and then you have been given general salaries now general salaries are 11600 correct general salaries is 11600 then rent and rates is equal to 6000 advertising expenses is equal to 8100 insurance expense actually is equal to 1000 journal expenses is equal to 5400 discount allowed is equal to 1800 and accountancy charges is equal to 500 correct now two important point first let me actually go through further information then sales is given to us sales of department x is actually 1 lakh and sales of department Y is equal to 80,000. Besides that, we have been given purchases return 1,100 and actually 800, correct? And then discount received is also given that is equal to 1,430. This is the information which we have so far as far as this particular question is concerned. This is the information. Now, in this question, Below it is written, following further information is given to you. Goods transferred, goods transferred from department X to Y is equal to 5000. So because X is transferring the goods, I will write towards the credit side of department X and I will put the same item towards the debit side of Y. Now question states that general salaries are to be allocated equally. General salary, now general salary in this question is 11,600. And general salaries will have to be allocated equally in this particular question. So 11,600 is there. I will allocate them equally. That is 5,800 and 5,800. Then question has given allocate carriage inward. Now question states that carriage inward and discount received on suitable basis. If you remember when I I made you write the notes in the opening session over there I have mentioned it very carefully that carriage inward and discount receipt must be segregated on the basis of purchases so how this item carriage and discount receipt will be segregated correct let's have a look over here let me create a little bit of space for me first of all what I am going to do there are two department in this question department x and department y correct department x and department y amount of purchases of department department uh, x is 75100 And purchases of department Y is 69,800. However, in this question, some returns have been also given. Less purchases return. Now, purchases return have been written over here. Purchases return of department X is 1,100. And purchases return of department Y is 800. So, the net purchases is equal to 74,000. And that is equal to 69,000. Correct? So we can see that purchases ratio of the respective two department is equal to 74 and 69. 74 is to 69. So on the basis of this ratio, we will divide. If I will take the total of these two figures, that will be equal to 74 plus 69. That is equal to 143. So that means discount received 1430 which is given to us. 1430 
which is given to us will be divided in these two department x and y in the ratio of 74 is to 69 correct that is 74 by 143 i will allocate to department x and 69 by 143 i will allocate to department y Similarly, carriage inward is there. Now, carriage inward amount is actually 2600. Even this figure will be divided in the ratio of 74 is to 69 ratio, purchases ratio. Now, question has further given another information that area occupied, area occupied is in the ratio of 3 is to 2. You will use this particular information to divide what we call your rental expenses rental expenses will be divided on the basis of area that is 3 is to 2 correct advertising i have already told you in 1 is to 1 and further it is given this line is very important in this particular case insurance premium is for a comprehensive policy and allocation is inconvenient so in this particular question question has categorically stated that the division of insurance company is not possible indirectly it means so we will not divide the insurance expense then where where and how we are going to write i will let you know then further it is given that closing stocks of the two departments are as follows so you can write the closing stock later on 17,800 and 15,600 that is not a big issue and now question has given you some more information Advertisement, general expense and discount allowed to be in the ratio of sales. So we have to allocate now general expenses in sales ratio, discount allowed in sales ratio, correct? And at, actually in this question advertising is sales ratio, sorry, not one, one is to one. It is in sales ratio. Advertising is in sales ratio, sorry allocate advertising general expense and discount allowed in the ratio of sales this is how we have to allocate in this particular question correct and rest of the information you can manage it very well so but still i will do it this i will do this particular question in fact i have already solved there are two items which need a little bit of discussion one is insurance and i haven't talked about accountancy charges remember one thing first of all what i will do i will prepare the profit and departmental profit and loss account trading and profit and loss account in usual manner we will compute the net profit of these two department without allocating insurance and accountancy charges once we shall have the net profit of these two department then i will prepare a combined profit and loss account combined profit and loss account and i will take the net profit of these two department to this account and insurance and accountancy charges I will write over here. Then I will get what we call total net profit of the organization. Sometime actually a particular expense is not possible to demarcate, to, to bifurcate. Correct? So in that case that will be put in co combined profit and loss account. And accountancy charges are always put in the combined profit and loss account. Is it clear to you or not? So these are the things which you need to do in this particular question. But it seems I, I will have to do this question for you just to so that there is no confusion at all. Although you can manage this question, I am very sure I am creating a space for me. Just wait. This much of space should be sufficient, correct? Okay then. This is question number 2.2. .2. Question number 2.2. .2. As usual, title will be Departmental Trading and Profit and Loss Account. Departmental trading and profit and loss account
there are two department in this particular question department x and department y department x and department y okay now as far as information is given i will first of all write look into the question carefully i will write here opening stock no problem with respect to opening stock 15200 and 10800 then we will write here purchases as far as purchases are concerned 75,100 for department X is there and 69,800 for department Y is given to you. Correct. As far as sales are concerned, that is equal to 1 lakh and 80,000. There are purchases return also. An un Unfortunately, I have forgotten to subtract purchases, return. Correct? So, sometime it could happen with you also. Right? So, you need not require to again overwrite or cut it down. Purchases return, you simply put towards the opposite side. Purchases return. Correct? 1100. So, sometime in the examination, we may forget. At the time, you need not require to rub it out or overwrite or do what we call rewriting or cut it out. You simply put the purchases return, what we got towards the opposite side. Correct? Now, we have got in this case, carriage inwards also. And we have seen that carriage inward must be divided on the basis of purchases ratio. And we have com computed the purchases ratio, if you remember. Purchases ratio was 74 is to 69. So, I will have to divide the amount of carriage inward in this ratio and I will get 1480 and 1380. Is it clear to you or not? Correct? And then, we must not forget to write the amount of closing stock. What is the amount of closing stock in this particular question? I am not able to recapitulate it. So, I will have to look. Amount of closing stock. Amount of closing stock is 17,800 and 15,600. Right, it is. 17,800. 17,800 is amount of closing stock and 15,600 I think so. 15,600, yes it is. Now because I have to flip through the pages, sometime it becomes a little bit cumbersome. 15,600, correct? Now below, as per information number one, it was given that department X has transferred some goods. So, write transfers and department X has transferred 5000 worth of goods to department Y. So, towards the credit side of department X, I will write 5000 and transfers I will write towards the debit side of Y because Y is the receiving department. Then I will compute my gross profit. The gross profit will be equal to 32,120 and 9,420. This will be your gross profit. Once you have determined the gross profit, now the next target is to compute your net profit obviously. So, gross profit brought down will be equal to 32,120 and 9,420. 9,420. Correct? Now, we have been given lots of items below. 
salaries is one. See, there are two items. One is salary and another one is actually general salary. So, salaries have been given in segregated manner. So, we need not require to do anything with respect to salaries. We will write them as, as it is. Correct? So, as far as salaries are concerned, I will simply write salaries. That is 9,000 and 8,500. Then we have been given general salaries. Now, general salaries shall be divided. It is given in the question in 1 is to 1 ratio. Correct? So, 5,800, 5,800. Then in this particular question, there, there are rent and rent will be divided on the basis of area that is 3 is to 2. 3,600 and 2,400 will be the respective amount. Then we have got in this case advertising and it is given in the question that advertising will have to be divided in the ratio of sales. A sales ratio is equal to 1 lakh is to 80,000 or 5 is to 4, you can say. So, on the basis of sales ratio, so sales ratio is 5 is to 4. Advertising expense, 4,500 and 3,600. Then in this question, general expenses are also there. So, general expenses will also be divided in the ratio of sales, that is 5 is to 4, 3000 and 2400. Then in this question, there is discount allowed also. Discount allowed. And even discount allowed will be divided in the ratio of 5 is to 4, 1800, so 1800. So, you can see actually, that we have submitted all the item, now discount received is remaining. As far as discount received is concerned, we have already computed that in the ratio of 74 is to 69, that is purchases ratio, it will be divided. So, 740 and 690, you will get the figure. Correct? So, this is how you will have to do this particular question. So, not very tough but at the same time, not very easy. But question is still not completed. Remember one thing. First of all, now, now I am going to compute the net profit. As far as computation of net profit is concerned, even in this question, your department X is earning some profit, 5,960. However, your department Y is undergoing heavy losses. 13,390. So, you have computed your net results, but without what we call taking into consideration two items, accountancy charges and the insurance premium. Accountancy charges are never ever allocated, correct? Remember one thing. However, insurance expenses can be allocated on the basis, on some basis, but at the same time, here in this particular question, it was very clearly mentioned, very clearly mentioned that insurance charges are inconvenient to divide. So I told you if a particular expense you come across and you find that it is inconvenient to divide it, then you will have to prepare a combined profit and loss account or common profit and loss account or general profit and loss account. It can be called as common, general, or combined profit and loss account. Now, what you are going to do, first of all, you are going to write here net profit. Now, net profit of department X is there. That is 5960. Whereas, there is net loss of department Y and net loss is 13,390. Now you will debit both these expenses insurance over here. That 
that is equal to 1000 and accountancy charges. That is 500. Correct? Unfortunately, in this particular question, debit side is bigger. So, whatever balance we are getting, it is showing net loss. So, organization has incurred a loss of 8930. Organization has incurred a loss of 8930. You need to understand this particular point. Correct? So, with that, we finish section. We finish this particular section, section 2 also. Correct? And uh, just wait. Let me just come back to my original position. Right. So, this is section 2 and now we will go ahead with interdepartmental transfers and unrealized profit when we begin the what we call this particular topic over there also i mentioned that this is going to be the most significant part of this particular chapter why this happens to be the most significant part of this particular chapter the reason being is that there are interdepartmental transfers number one Interdepartmental transfers are at some margins. That means when Department A is transferring goods to Department B, it is also charging some profit. Still, there is no problem. The problem is that out of the transferred goods, some of the goods are still lying in the stock of that department to whom the goods were transferred. This is the problem. Because whenever I will transfer you some goods and at the end of the year, if some of the goods are still within the stock, then it creates some problem and it gives rise to the concept of unrealized profit. That means this section basically would deal with interdepartmental transfers and unrealized profit. So, what will be the process? How we will have to find out the unrealized profit? Why there is some unrealized profit? Because I have transferred the goods to you at a profit margin. But at the end of the year, some of the stock which I transfer to you is still lying unsold with you. And we both are what we call part of the same organization. So whatever stock is lying with you actually contains some profit margin which is not realized because that part is not sold. So that is the problem. I will have to extract that part that is known as concept of unrealized profit. So how we are going to actually find out the unrealized part so and what sort of what we call mystery will unsolved under this particular concept that we'll talk about but that we shall talk about in the upcoming session so till then it's time to say goodbye <laughs>